السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن النعيم في الله سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Lord of the worlds والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of them and to bless every single one of us, to bless you all and your children, your offspring, your loved ones. May Allah bless the entire ummah and may Allah bless humanity at large. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you take a look at the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find that they have been created differently. If you take a look at human being, we were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a unique way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu was salam from dust, thereafter mixed with water to become clay. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew in him the soul and he became just like you and I. Subhanallah. Look at the skin, look at everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused to become alive and to disperse on earth. It's amazing, it is something unique, it is a miracle, it is divine and it is solely and only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe that we were created from soil or from dust. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has created man from soil, from dust. And at the same time, the multiplication happened in a unique way. It is reported by Ibn Kathir in Al-Bidayah wa Nihayah that Adam alayhi salam, when he was created, he was the only one of his species and he felt quite lonely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a gift as a result of his call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove his loneliness. And that gift was in the form of Hawa or Eve, may peace be upon her. One day he was asleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to create Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam from Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. So Adam alayhi salam, may peace be upon him, was created from dust, from soil. There is no contradiction when we say dust and soil and clay and so on. It is different stages of creation. And thereafter, Eve or Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam created from Adam alayhi salatu wa salam as a gift to Adam alayhi salam. Allah chose to do this. And immediately there was a connection. If Allah wanted, He could have created Hawa alayhi salam in the same way that He created Adam alayhi salam. Allah does not need anything to create something. He can actually just say be and it would have been. He did not need soil or dust to create man in the first place. It was His choice to do that. And some of the scholars make mention of an interesting point to say, Oh man, do not become arrogant or haughty on earth. Remember, you are from the dust. And guess what? You walk on the same dust every day. This is why in Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. It is from dust that you were created. And into that dust you shall be returned. And from that you will be resurrected once again. Don't become haughty, O oh man. Don't let arrogance overtake you. Don't become too proud. Remember your beginnings. Remember how Allah chose to create you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humbleness and humility. Amen. So the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to create Eve, may peace be upon her, or Hawa alayhi salatu was salam, from Adam are many. Some of them we may know and some of them we may not know. One of them, and I can tell you, is to create a connection. A connection and a certain type of interdependency. We all depend on Allah and Allah fulfills our needs. But Allah fulfills our needs sometimes through some of His creatures. For example, if I need something, I would have to rely, obviously, primarily, we all rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah has given some people around me, perhaps, the ability to fulfill something I need. So 
I am here today. There was a whole team that had to work in order for me to be here. The same applies to you. There was an effort made and you had to perhaps register. You had to make an effort to be here. You may have needed the help of maybe a taxi driver, maybe public transport, in any other way that you may have made your way here. That was all because of Allah's plan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created one from another in order to make a link. And this is why you take a look. Allah says at the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, "Ya ayyuha an-nas, taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa." O oh man, be conscious of your maker, your Rabb, your creator, your nourisher, your cherisher, your sustainer, your provider, your protector, your curer. All that is included in the term Rabb. O oh man, be conscious of your Rabb, the one who created you from a single soul and created from that soul his spouse and from the two of them caused a multitude to spread on earth. And that was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. So the connection is such that it was chosen by Allah. If he wanted, he would have not created one from the other. He could have created them separately, completely, either in the same way or in a different way. But look at this. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. And what is the plan? We will know it through revelation. This is why we look into the Quran. Take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when it comes to marriage. You know, husband and wife together, they will cause by the will of Allah, the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reproduction of the humankind in a way that we have become a multitude such that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a unique way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us such that if you were to pause and ponder, we actually are connected through mercy, through love, through blood, through so many different ways. And that is something amazing. Allah says, in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ From the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He has created for you, from you, your spouses in order or, or He has created with that Something known as mawaddatan wa rahmatan. The fact that you got married. If you married for the correct reasons and you married with the correct method and way shown to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would automatically create mawadda, which refers to a very high level of love. Care. You have a concern. That is my spouse. You have a feeling. Without that feeling, how do you expect the children that may be resultant to live a life that is upright and balanced. So Allah says, we've automatically created that feeling, the sense of belonging, mawaddatan, that love of a very, very high level, which comes with care and it comes with concern. It comes with a sense of possessiveness. Amazing. It comes with a sense of possessiveness. That's my husband. That is my wife. Haven't you heard people say that? Subhanallah. Why do people feel bad? When something happens to their spouse, it's because they are connected to them. So Allah says, Rahmah, the mercy is also instilled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the heart of both of them. So the minute this marriage takes place, there is a connection. Imagine if there is that connection between husband and wife, what do you think the connection will be between the parents and the children? The resultant children of that same marriage, subhanAllah, it has to be more powerful, it has to be greater, it has to be of a higher level. Allah did not need to cause man to multiply on earth in that particular way, but He chose that way. Think about it carefully. If Allah wanted, we could have grown on trees. 
If Allah wanted, we could have perhaps popped out of the earth. All of us could have grown. A day will come when that may happen. In fact, the narration makes mention of how on the day of resurrection, when the earth will have a certain thick white rain fall on it for a period of 40, whether it is 40 days or 40 years, Allah knows best. But as a result of that, there will be a growth of the humankind. Human beings will grow, subhanAllah, just like the trees grow. If Allah wanted, that could have been the case right here, right now. It could have been how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to cause man to multiply. But Allah says his divine wisdom, he wanted the connection. So when you have children, now you're looking after the children. Why? Because you feel a connection. Someone touches your baby. Take a look at what happens. You feel so, so much you know, possessive over the child, you will not allow the child to cry. Take a look at the mothers. May Allah make it easy for all the mothers. You know, many of the mothers go through what is known as postnatal depression. The reason is the changes that happen. So suddenly after nine months of having held that child, the gestation period and thereafter, you still don't have a rest. You know, people think once I give birth, okay, it's going to be easy. And it becomes more difficult. So the mothers start thinking, when is this going to end? Sometimes it's normal, it's natural. This is why you have your own relatives to give you a hand. Subhanallah. Imagine if we were not connected to each other and each one was a unit on his or her own. How would we ever have been able to help one another without wanting something monetary or without wanting something material. It is something unique from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He kept this in such a way that you have a link that you feel that you own this child, yet you don't. Allah owns the child. That is something amazing. Let me repeat that in different words. When you have children, whose children are those? So someone will say, my children. The answer is no. Allah has given you temporary custody of those children. He gave you when he wanted, he will take them away when he wants. They belong to him. This is why when someone passes away, what do we say? What is the dua? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That's the primary supplication. Indeed, we belong to Allah. We were all Allah's as it is. We don't belong to our parents in the complete sense of belonging. Although we belong to them in the sense of lineage and in the sense that they could say that this was my child given by Allah. But we need to at the same time acknowledge that Allah can take the child away completely at any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught this to us. So we say, wa inna li, wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And indeed, we are all going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all going to return to Allah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was bestowed with children, he was given many female children. And he was given a few male children. And all his male children passed away in infancy. In infancy or childhood. And at the same time, when he lost his son Ibrahim, it was an example for us all. What did he say? He says, yes, we are saddened by the fact that we will miss this child. Perhaps tears will roll down. In fact, tears did roll down the cheeks, the blessed cheeks of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at the same time, if you take a look at the statements that were uttered, he said, we will not say anything besides that which pleases Allah. Inna lillahi ma akhad wa lahu ma a'ta wa kullu shay'in indahu bi ajalin musamma. Indeed, for Allah is what he has taken away. What Allah took away, it was his anyway. It was always Allah's. If someone comes to you and tells you, look, I'm giving you something for a while, keep it. And when I come to ask for it, you give it back. Allah doesn't ask us when he wants the child back. He takes the child away. Do you know why? We would never agree. We would never agree to say, okay, take my child back. Take my child away. No, we wouldn't agree. Not under normal circumstances. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So Allah takes the child away. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, Indeed, for Allah is what he has taken away. It belongs to him anyway. And guess what he says? He continues to say, Walahu ma a'ta. And to Allah belonged what he gave in the first place anyway. It was always his. Where was that child before I had the child? What about those who don't have children? They don't have because Allah has not blessed them or bestowed upon them the children. That is their test. When you have children, that is your test. When you have males alone, your test. You have females alone, your test. You have nothing, your test. 
You have children and Allah takes them away, your test. You have children, they are obedient initially and then disobedient, your test. You have children, they are disobedient initially and then obedient, your test. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in this. So Allah creates a link. Why does He create a link? Because as the child is born, in fact, to complete that supplication, at the end, the Prophet ﷺ says, وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ Every single thing that Allah has created comes with a time limit, a tag that has on it the date and the time it's going to expire. That's it. Subhanallah. So you and I have a time tag. Everything created has a time tag. Allah knows the tag. Allah knows the time. Allah chooses the time. It's not you and I. This is why a person who commits suicide has actually disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they were normal and they did that, if they were abnormal, Allah knows best how He will treat them. But we are taught that suicide is prohibited. The reason is life and death is in the hands of Allah. The minute you decide to take it in your own hands, you have defied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quite simple. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He guide us. So if you take a look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... He had for you parents. These parents, it was a test for them. They were excited when they were expecting you. Yes, they were excited. Perhaps they might have been going through difficulty. Very much so. Because it's not easy. The gestation period is definitely a period that differs from female to female. But it comes with its own challenges. You and I know this. And with that excitement, subhanallah, the mother is ready to go through all that. There is turbulence, there is turmoil. For example, there is pain, there is suffering. As the child is becoming heavier, the mother is struggling but becomes happier. Wow, my child is growing. Kicking. Subhanallah, kicking like the child is playing football in the belly. I'm sure the women who've given birth will tell you, yes, that's what happens. You can actually see sometimes, you know, the arm and the foot. And you mashallah, oh wow, you got hurt. But you say, wow, that's the foot. Can you see it? Subhanallah. And the husband and wife enjoy this. They actually look forward to it. And then the, the actual childbirth is so difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how you need to respect your parents even if they are non-Muslim. Because your mother has looked after you. And your mother has given birth to you in great difficulty. And Allah has imposed that upon your mother. So remember how you speak to your mother. Be careful. It's a test for you. You will always have to remember, even if your mother is not a Muslim, even if she is a disobedient Muslim, for as long as she does not instruct you to do something in the disobedience of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is your duty to be kind to her. It is your duty to obey her in that which is acceptable to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kindness is something that you have to show towards your parents. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu reiterated this. So imagine if there was no link and you were just created and you were up for sale, up for grabs. What would happen? People would lead a, a life in single units. No one would even need to greet each other. If you were sick and ill, I think if someone died, perhaps the majority of people would just rot at the spot where they died like rodents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. But there is ihtiram, there is respect. There is a mutual mercy that is felt such that if someone has to pass away, there are people who feel connected to them. This is the family. The family unit, starting with your spouse, your parents, your children, your brothers and sisters, there is a connection. There should be a connection. Part of Allah's test for you is to feel that connection and to fulfill the rights within that connection. That's your test. This is why I always tell siblings who don't speak to each other just because you've had a financial problem, just because your wives didn't get along, just because your husbands didn't get along, just because of some strange reason. That is your test. Don't fail your test. Put those things aside. Your faith, your family, you need to understand the connection between the two. You need to understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected it from the very beginning. Had He wanted, there would have been no connection. Wallahi. There would have been absolutely no connection. Allah says, for you to come into existence, we will use people whom you will now know as, know as parents. No matter who they are. None of us apply where we wanted to be born, what type of parents we wanted, what type of upbringing we wanted. No. 
It was imposed on us as part of our test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something amazing and unique. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah's plan to have this connection between the two. And it is something that is undeniable. It's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we have the connection given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at it. My brothers and sisters, if someone has to become sick, say a baby, a little child becomes sick or ill, a cough, for example, perhaps if a child has, uh, if a child is struggling or suffering with what we know as, you know, a colic problem, for example, the mother is unsettled. The mother, why is the mother unsettled? There is a connection created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between the mother and the child, the baby. That connection you cannot deny. The mother will not sleep. Subhanallah, sometimes if you have a good husband, mashallah, decent father of the child, the father might say, you know what, you rest today, I'll take care of the child, mashallah. And you know the others, they'll say, listen, I'm going to sleep elsewhere. Have you heard that? Mashallah. I'm going next door. I'll stay. I have work tomorrow morning first thing. Come on, this cannot be... My brother, you had the child. Come on, you need to participate in this. You know, you might have an understanding spouse, but you need to make sure that you know that it's also your responsibility and your duty. You cannot just run away saying, I'm the male, that's it. Muhammad وسلم, also helped looked after, look after his own children. He also helped with the chores and so on. This is the connection because when the children witness the, fam- the, the, the parents living in a beautiful way, they learn. And when they learn, You are fulfilling your duty unto Allah to pass over the torch of goodness and good character and deen to the next generation. That is your children. That is what your faith teaches. And that is the connection between the faith and the family. Subhanallah. One of the points of connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept so many points of connection. If we take another look and if we look at, for example, the rights that children have over their parents. You know, everyone speaks about your mother, you must be kind to your mother, you must be kind to your father, you must be good to your mother, good to your father. What about the fathers and mothers being good to their own children? Like I said at the beginning, your child is not your property in every sense of the term. No, you cannot say this is my property. It is the property of Allah. Evidence of it is where we say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah and unto Allah we shall return. This evidence pointing towards the fact that they actually belong to Allah. Temporarily, He has given us custody of these children. And He has promised us that later on in the hereafter, you will be reunited with these children of yours by the will of Allah, if Allah wills. And if you have taken care of them, and if they are deserving of that, and you are too, that's the mercy of Allah. Many of us, When we look at our children, we get so happy, so delighted, mashallah. And then if a child passes away, or even if a parent passes away, we would go to the scholars and say, look, will I meet my my son again? Will I see my mother again? Will I see my father? These are valid questions. They are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us quite clearly, those who have followed through with iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite them in the hereafter. So work on your children. You want to be with them. But have you ever asked yourself, why do you want to be with your children? Why are they called your loved ones? Have you ever asked yourself that question? It's because Allah wanted it that way. Had He wanted it another way, there would have never been a connection between you. You would have grown like fruit grows on a tree. And even if fruit grew on a tree and we grew like fruit, you know, grows on a tree, we would be connected because those from one tree would probably feel for each other. That's amazing. So the same applies, you have the same parents, you should be feeling for one another. You should be feeling for your parents. That's, a, that's the plan of Allah. You need to fulfill the rights of your parents and guess what? Your parents need to fulfill your rights. You cannot just do anything you please for your child. The child wants this, it's done. The child wants that, it's done. Ask yourself, is it within the pleasure of Allah? Similarly, when you want something for the child, ask yourself, is it within the pleasure of Allah? If it is not, cut it out. That's your link with Allah and your link with your family. You will get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you become stronger in your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the role that Allah has placed on your shoulders as a parent or as a child or as a brother or as an aunt. And these are the closest circle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept. So I can give you an example because it is really a major problem 
When it comes to the marriage of your children, what do you do? Have you asked yourself, my faith in one hand, what I believe in one hand, and my family on the other hand. What do I do? How do I treat this family of mine? Is it according to the faith? If it is not, we have failed. So your child wants to marry and the child says, Dad, you know what? I'm now 19 years old, 20 years old, 21 years old, whatever it is. And I'm really interested in marriage. You know, I'm at the age where... And the father's a wealthy man or the, the parents are wealthy. And they say, no son, you cannot marry now. You will only talk about it in 10 years time or 5 years time. Well, you are, you are now following your whims and fancies. You may want to discuss the matter. You may want to put forth what you felt was your dream. But if the child wants something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained, has permitted, and you are blocking it, perhaps you may be encouraging them going down the wrong street or the wrong avenue. Remember this. So the child says, I would like to get married. And you say, no, I'm not happy with this. But you're wealthy, you're okay. And you're saying, you know what, I'm... Wait until this guy graduates or you graduate. Who said you need to wait until graduation before you get married? Subhanallah, discuss it with your child. If the children are prepared to do that, Alhamdulillah. If they're not prepared to do that, help them to get closer to Allah. Bearing in mind that that child is more belonging to Allah than belonging to you. Your ownership of the child is very temporary and it is not complete ownership. It is only what I would term the custody of the children. But the ownership belongs to Allah. So it is your duty. Wallahi. It is your duty to fulfill what Allah has ordained regarding the child. Allah may take the child away now. And Allah may take you away now. And you will have to answer to the owner of those children. What did you do? Allah says, Allah will ask you. I blessed you with children. You loved your children. But when it came to fulfilling what I have asked you to fulfill, you did not make it easy for them at all. You did not make it easy, subhanallah. People say, and I know of this problem, you know, a few years ago, I did not believe that there would be something known as forced marriages on earth. I really thought we were beyond it. I think maybe in my part of the world, I did not witness it. I didn't see it as we were growing up. Mashallah, we had quite a beautiful upbringing. Alhamdulillah, we were, we were not open to see the rest of the world. But as subhanallah, we grew a little bit older, we began to see what's happening on the globe and the globe became a little village. Wallahi, I've come across hundreds of cases, perhaps even thousands of cases of parents forcing their daughters and even their sons to marry people they really don't want to marry. And they think they threaten them and blackmail them by telling them this is the obedience of Allah. If you want Allah's pleasure, you follow your mother. Who said that? Nobody ever said that you will obey your parents where they are wrong. Nobody. So those of us who are parents here, we have children. Your duty is to facilitate for them the worship of Allah and what Allah has permitted. You cannot come and blackmail them by telling them, look, if you obey me, Allah will be happy. And if you don't know, the Quran speaks about Ihsan. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا Allah has instructed man to be kind to his parents. Allah did not say, obey your parents. In fact, if you get to the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was asked, مَنْ أَحَقُّ النَّاسَ بِحُسْنِ, بحسن صُحْبَتِي Who is most, the most deserving of all the people? Who is the most deserving of? My goodness, my good companionship for me to be good with them. The term obedience is not used here. I need to be good. I need to be kind. Obedience is always to Allah. If they tell you something within the instruction of Allah, you will obey. If they tell you something outside of what Allah has permitted, you will not obey. So Allah says, in fact, in that narration, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ummuk, your mother. When he was asked again, he says, your mother. When he was asked again, he says, your mother. So some of the mothers use it to blackmail their children. You see, the Prophet ﷺ says, I am more important than your father thrice. That's not the wording of the hadith. You are both important. You are both important if you follow what Allah has asked you. The moment you go against what Allah has asked you, your importance diminishes. That's what it is. So do not impose on your children that which is within your whims and fancies solely because 
you would like to show the rest of the world that oh my daughter married a rich man's son he doesn't need to be rich the hadith says if a proposal comes in your direction and you are happy with the level of the deen and the character of the individual let it happen if you don't there will be great fitna and facade on earth I'm sure I have spoken about this narration so many times in the past. But the problem is, we still use our own criteria. And then we want happiness. We want contentment. We want so much of goodness in our lives. But the owner of that goodness, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He has ordained means nothing to us. This is where we falter. This is where we fail. My brothers and sisters, let's go back to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understand your responsibility as a parent. Understand that the child has rights over you. And that is, they have a say in where they will get married. They have a say. Did you hear that? It's part of the rights of your children to have a say where they want to marry. Subhanallah. People look at Islam and the Muslims and think, that this religion is barbaric and backward solely because we have added in the faith that which is not in it and we have subtracted that which is from it. So we spoil it for ourselves. But if you were to follow the faith in its beautiful form, the form that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought, then indeed you would find people looking at it without finding a single issue with the deen. No problems, no issues. This is absolutely amazing. What? It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No contradiction in it. Nothing wrong in the word of Allah. Never. If you feel that there is a contradiction in the word of Allah, go and ask those who know. If you don't know, go and ask those who know. Go and ask those who have learned this revelation. Go and ask those with knowledge. They will respond to you. They will give you an answer. They will answer you. If you look at this verse, it's amazing. It would mean that they will respond with revelation. And it also means if you have questions regarding revelation. Go and ask those who know. Subhanallah. The problem with us, everyone is a know-it-all. When it comes to accounting, we will ask the accountant. When it comes to law, you ask the lawyer. When it comes to plumbing, you will ask the plumber. When it comes to medicine, you will ask the doctor. But when it comes to something that is more important than all of that, which is your faith, we tend to know it all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding of revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding of what this faith is all about. It is something unique. So the link that we have between the family and the faith is quite clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen it for us and He has made it clear that there are rights to be fulfilled between you. Over and above that, He has placed this love, automatic. You get married, there is love. We spoke about it. You have a child, there is love. There is mercy, compassion. You feel it. Your brothers and sisters, mashallah, you grow up with them, even if there was a little bit of sibling rivalry. That's your brother. That's your sister. Mending a relationship within the family unit is something very, very great. It is an act of worship that is praised in the Quran and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine those known as Dawil Qurba, your relatives, those who are closely related to you, to fulfill their rights. It's a great act of worship. It's Allah. Allah wants it. And Allah created you in a way that you have people you have to call your relatives. Whether they are Muslim or not. Whether they are obedient to Allah or not. Those are your relatives. Take a look at Nuh. Noah, may peace be upon him. His son did not accept the message. He was one of those who said to his father, You know what? I'm going to climb this mount. And the father says, That's not going to help you. But look at how the father addressed the son. The father says, Ya ma'ana wa la takum ma'al kafirin. 
Oh my dear son, Bunay. Bunay is a beautiful term. The son is a disbeliever. The son did not accept the message of the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. But the father being a messenger of Allah, knowing that he is right, trying to convince his child because there is a connection. There is a responsibility. There is a duty. You need to remind. You need to go forth. You need to make an effort on your children. He says, Oh my beloved son, Ya Bunay, Irkam ma'ana. Come ride with us. Come and ride with us. Subhanallah. And don't be from among the losers, the disbelievers. Don't be from among the rejectors, those who deny. Don't be from among them. And the son says, Oh my father, I'm going to climb the mountain. The point I'm raising here is the discussion between a messenger of Allah and his own son. Why? There is a connection. There is a link. Link created by whom? By Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Nuh alayhi salam's message to the rest of his people in so many places. But... Allah decided to make mention uniquely and, and intentionally of the son. It is divine because it shows us that even though the son is disobedient, there was a reminder that came in the most beautiful way. With us, the child does something wrong in the house and we begin to yell. We begin to scream, I don't want, I disown you and so on. Hang on, relax. It can never be as bad as what happened at the time of Nuh alayhi salam. You're not a prophet of Allah to begin with number one. And secondly, he, subhanallah, is not as bad as what happened there where there was absolute kufr. You know, throwing away a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was a father. And saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even interested. It didn't happen. It, to us, it cannot be that bad. But take a look at what happened. How Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam's address was repeated in the Quran, made mention of in the Quran. Not for no reason, for us to learn a lesson from. There are so many lessons from there, we've only mentioned one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill the rights of our own, of our, our own children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. When we don't have children, we have a problem. We begin to cry. And when we have the children, we have another problem. We begin to cry for so many different reasons. Let's understand all this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created us all. Allah says, I created you to test you. That's what He says. Listen to what He says in Surah Al-Mulk. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is He who created death and life in order to test you, in order to test you. Who from amongst you has better deeds? That's why He created death and life in order to test you. So part of the test is the fact that you were born to parents. That's part of your test. The fact that you have relatives. The fact that you have family members. Part of your test. In fact, that's the beginning of your test. Right at the beginning, that's your test. You have children, what do you do? What type of schools do you send your children to? How much of interest do you show in the education of your children when it comes to getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I've seen a lot of little clips where... Small children, maybe two years, three years old, as they begin to, you know, speak. They are taught the capital cities of the whole world. They are taught this and taught, I'm not saying it's bad, mashallah. But did we equate it with a little bit of the Quran? Did we try to let them understand things? Did we teach them about Allah? Did we teach them about truthfulness, about kindness, about compassion? What did we teach them? Yes, people get excited about everything else. But when it comes to the link with Allah, don't forget, we are believers. Like I said earlier, Allah can take those children away as soon as He gives them to you. He can give you, you get excited, and a few months down the line, the child is no longer with you. What happens? We cry. Yes, it's normal. It's human. We feel it. We are sad. We have sleepless nights. Some people cannot get over it for a long, long time, but that was part of your test. Allah loves the child more than you could ever have loved the child because the child totally and absolutely belongs to Allah in every sense of the term belonging. But for you, the child is not really yours in every sense. It's just for a while. Allah has given you the child. That's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to fulfill our responsibilities. Similarly, when it comes to children, as you grow up, 
and your parents become older, you become older. Why is it that we find ourselves pulling away from these parents? Now you've got married and you no longer even call your mother to say, Mom, how are you doing? Is everything okay? I miss you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. The link with your parents as you grow older is part of your test. This is why if you look at the dua made mention of in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra regarding the dua that is to be made, and one of them is, Allah says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغُنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا Allah says, He has ordained that you shall worship none but Allah. You will worship none but your Maker. And you will be kind to your parents. You will be kind. Notice he did not say obedience. You have to obey, yes, only within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here he uses the term ihsanan, which means kindness. No matter who, no matter what, no matter what faith they belong to and no matter who they are, Allah chose them for you. You will be kind to them. That's part of your test. No matter what, are you kind to your mother? Are you kind to your father? Are you? Well, the Quran asks you to be kind to them. And guess what Allah says? When they grow old, one of them or both of them, never ever abuse them verbally. Don't say something that will hurt them. The term used in the Quran is uff, which some say is the lightest of those terms. You know, when you just turn your cheek and say uh, to your parents, Allah says, don't say that. Those of us whose parents are alive, remember this. Do not say hurtful words to them. Use good words. It's part of your test. Do not fail the test because you're going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess what? Every answer to every test or question that you've had is recorded and you will see the result of it. There was no point if you have abused them. Go and ask their forgiveness. If they've already passed away, perhaps you might want to make dua for them. And who knows, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive you if they forgive you later on when they have seen that you've made a lot of dua for them, which has benefited them and helped them. So what you and I need to understand is Allah is telling us that as your parents grow older, watch out, it's not going to be easy. When you were a little baby, it was very difficult for them to look after you. So as they grow older, it will be even more difficult for you to take care of them. But don't tell them off and don't rebuke them. And when you speak to them, speak to them with good words. Words which are acceptable. Subhanallah. And then Allah says that you need to lower the wings of mercy or spread the wings of mercy. Be humble when it comes to your parents. It's your test. No matter what. Parents become difficult. Sometimes you find a mother as she's growing older. You know, some of them might remain silent. They won't talk much. That's their way of dealing with that age perhaps. And some of them will keep on talking. Subhanallah. You know, solar power. As soon as the, as soon as the sun rises, they begin to speak. And it doesn't stop until the sun sets. Subhanallah. That's part of your test. You may want to sit your mother down and speak to her to say, you know what? I suggest you speak a little bit less, my beloved mother. Subhanallah. I know I'm speaking from my own experience. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and acceptance. Beautiful mothers of ours. Sometimes they, they want to say whatever's in their heart. And they might not choose the best way of saying things because at the end of the day, you are their child. That doesn't mean you need to abuse them. They've seen everything. My mother's close on to 80 years old. May Allah grant her goodness. And to be honest, she says things. She says anything she wants in whatever way she wants. Alhamdulillah. 
you have to take it. And that's part of your duty unto your parents from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be careful. You need to be humble. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us revisit our relationship with our parents. A day will come when you won't have them anymore. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and say, Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayani sagira. Oh Allah, have mercy on them for indeed they have brought me up when I was a child. In fact, the wording of that dua is so beautiful that it says in the same way, it's more like a compensation to say, in the same way they looked after me when I was young, Ya Allah, have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. And it could mean, have mercy on them because they have looked after me. Subhanallah. So that is a dua that we are supposed to be making for our parents. So imagine if we are not supposed to utter one single word of abuse and we are supposed to be making dua for them. What do you expect? That is definitely something so great. The hadith says the Prophet ﷺ was once uttering certain statements and Jibreel alayhi salatu was was uttering the term or saying Ameen. And later on we got to find out that one of those du'as was in fact he said Ameen to the du'a of the angel according to some narration. And one of those du'as was destruction be upon one who witnesses both or one of his parents in old age and has not earned Jannah through their service. Wow. Wow. That's a difficult one. Which means you're given an opportunity to get into Jannah through the service of both or one of your parents when they grow older. So if your parents are old in your lifetime, it's a gift of Allah. It's one of the doors of paradise and the doors of paradise are not easy to open. Remember that. Very difficult. I always say that yes indeed, through Allah's mercy we will enter Jannah. By His mercy we will enter Jannah. And sometimes it could just be a small deed that Allah's loved and He grants you Jannah for. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of entering Jannah through a deed, remember that deed is not going to be simple, you know, walk in the park. No, it's going to be difficult. It's going to come with great dedication. It's going to require an effort and dedication. And you might feel like giving up sometimes. You know, people say, oh my mother, mashallah, you look after your mom and your dad. Yes, it might not be the same every day. As they grow older, it might become more difficult. Well, that's part of your test. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all. Those of us whose folks have passed away, may Allah grant them Jannah. Those of us whose parents have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannah. Pray for them, make dua for them. It's your duty. One of the best things you could ever do for your deceased parents is very, very simply make dua for them. One of the best things you could do for them. Simple. We become sophisticated. No need to become very sophisticated. You have to be dedicated enough to make dua for them. That's the mercy of Allah. That's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you to resolve the matters that you may be having between yourselves and your siblings. I know many families are struggling and suffering with brothers not speaking to each other. Relatives not speaking to each other. They don't greet each other back. You say, Assalamu Alaikum, and the person looks away. That's it. But that's your brother. So what? I don't like him. Why? It's either a financial matter, like I said earlier, or perhaps it is because your wives didn't get along, or perhaps it's because of some decision you might have made. Let's set that aside. Let's be bigger than that. Let's resolve our matters. Let's sort our problems out. Let us set a good example for the next generation. Why is it that we find as the generations are passing, they're becoming less interested in their relatives. My father can read the names and the exact relations of hundreds of people who are related to me. Guess what? I can perhaps say the same for only tens of them. No longer hundreds. My father actually sits down and tells us that person is related to you because my my grandfather's first cousin was this and was, and I sit and I'm baffled. I'm actually amazed by this old man sitting in front of me, explaining to me. And I've told him so many times, do you know what dad, why don't you write it down? He says, well, you've heard me say it. Why don't you write it down? <laughs> Subhanallah. And we are guilty of not writing it down. And guess what? 
if that generation passes on, you may not even know how you're related to the person sitting right next to you. You won't even know. And they're so closely related. It's part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, my brothers and sisters. If you are asked to fulfill the, the rights of your relatives, how on earth are you going to be able to fulfill those rights when you don't even know who is related to you? Subhanallah. We're not even bothered at times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us find out more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill the rights of one another. I tell you, the test is more when there is a difficulty. During days of difficulty, you actually get to know how you fared in the test Allah has placed in front of you. Days of ease, it's quite simple. With us, even in days of ease, I think we fail sometimes. Technology makes us become in touch with all the wrong people. And those whom we are meant to be in touch with, there's nothing happening. Subhanallah. Those whom you're meant to be asking, you know, it's something that I am very passionate about. Just to ask a question, how are you doing? Oh, my brother, I'm missing you. Oh, I really hope you were here. These words can boost a person. They can make somebody's day. They can make a week, a month. They can make a whole year of somebody. Imagine if you suddenly travel to where your brother was or your sister is and you went to visit them without burdening them. You know, you have to know. And I'm going to spend a moment because the world has changed. You know, before people could pitch up at your door and say, I'm here to stay for one week. And they'd say, wow, you're welcome. Today, if you just pitch up at the door and you say, I'm here for a week, they will look at each other and say, couldn't you have phoned us? Couldn't you have told us something? Well, you don't blame them because you should have. With technology today, you should be telling people. But if you want to have a surprise, then make your own plan. If you know the nature of the people you're going to, you need to make your plan. So you can say, my brother, I've just come to visit you, mashallah. Guess what? We're all going for lunch at such and such a place. His wife will be the first one to say, yay, mashallah. Do you know that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Because she knows, wow. They didn't put a burden on my shoulder. But imagine you're going and for three days you're going to be with them. You've come with a troop of 10 people and the wife is slaving it in front of everyone. Was that a gift? No, no, no. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us apply some wisdom. So this is why we say you need to know who you're going to. You need to know their temperament. You need to know how busy they are, whether they're at work or not. And you need to make sure you've made a plan and you've made it easy for them. You really wanted to put a smile on their faces. And you did not burden them. This is something required. It is something that will pave your way to Jannah. It will make your path to Jannah very simple and easy. Why? Because you have done it solely for the sake of Allah. It was not because I wanted someone to make a meal for me or to do this for me or that for me. Or I wanted to just, you know, go there and plant myself where I was not welcome. No, I've done it for the sake of Allah. How many of us are ready to do that with our own parents who might be living at a distance? How many of us are ready to pick up the phone or to send a message? Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, these are just some little pointers that show us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine plan. Like I said, and I'm repeating it, Allah has created us in a way that is unique for a purpose. He has made us related to each other for a purpose. Sit sometimes and ponder over it. Think about it. Why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose to create us in this unique way where there is reproduction through male and female who are married and then you are born and you have someone known as your parents and they have someone known as their children and you have perhaps brothers and sisters and so on. Why did Allah do that? There is a reason. Like I said, it's part of your test. Do not fail that test. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He grant you all goodness and ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill the rights of our brothers and sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill the rights of our parents, our children, our family members. May He make us the best of people. It is actually not so easy. But at the same time, He who has the best of character and conduct, stands a better chance to enter Jannah as per the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he was asked, O Messenger, may peace be upon him, tell us the qualities of those who will earn paradise or who will enter paradise. And he says, Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluq. Two main qualities. Two main qualities found in people. One, 
the piety, the taqwa, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will find groups of people who are in paradise because they were conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find groups of people who will be in paradise because they had brilliant character and conduct. If you notice the two, one is connected to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other is connected to the rights of the rest of mankind. Those creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is known as huququllahi, the rights of Allah. And the other is known as huququl ibadi, the rights of the, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rest of the creation. So you can either enter Jannah with a combination of both of those, which is ideal, or at least with one of them. And remember, if you have the consciousness of Allah, it will have an effect and an impact on your character. So much so that one of my own teachers and asatira have always been making mention of one beautiful point. If a person's character stinks, there is something wrong with their taqwa. You heard that? If a person's character is bad, if their character is not up to scratch, there is something wrong with their consciousness of Allah. They do not really acknowledge what Allah has placed on their shoulders in terms of the rights that need to be fulfilled. Imagine you speak to people in a very bad way, your own family. You scream and yell at those who work with you or for you. You have no respect of anyone just because you have authority or money or you have something. And sometimes even, you, even though you may have nothing, but it's just part of the character and conduct, it shows you are not connected to Allah in the way that you should be. So my brothers and sisters, let's work on this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our shortcomings. In fact, I ask Allah to forgive our shortcomings to make us the best of people with unique character and conduct, that which we are able to pass on to others in a unique way. Remember when you have blessed or good character and conduct, it definitely rubs off. It definitely has an impact on your family members. It has an impact definitely on your children and those whom you interact with. They learn a thing or two. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that a means of our entry into Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu